Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm out here on vacation, uh, but I felt like doing one of these posts, and uh, I'm out in the woods doing uh, some e-biking that I took with me in my camping gear. Uh, anyway, got a nice little sinus infection going, and on top of it, took a massive hit to the side of my face <laughs> with a tree limb, uh, so you do have to be careful when you're out biking. That being said, um, I want to talk about the last post I put up last night, uh, Saturday, I believe that was Saturday, the 17th. So uh, I put up a post talking about Bird e-scooters, the company, and their stock, and that their stock is in a very bad place right now. It's down to 42 cents a share. and they're at a high risk of being kicked off the New York Stock Exchange. And that is the reality. The way the stock exchange works is you have to maintain uh, a $1 stock price for a minimum of 30 consecutive days. If you cannot do that, they remove you from the market. And uh, Bird e-scooters has been given the six month warning, they were given the warning back in June, so the clock is ticking for them. Now, uh, does that mean that the company is completely done and over with? No, it doesn't. Uh, anything could happen. Does it look good? No. Uh, this week is going to tell a lot. In fact, I might buy a thousand shares of that. Uh, but where I'm going with this is there was a couple responses on there and they're common responses and I want to address this because I think this topic is overall the biggest problem in Pittsfield with community involvement with politics with the ongoings in the community so when I posted that I got the standard response from a couple people one in particular that is you know I see his name involved in a lot of things, and he's involved in a lot of organizations, uh, protect, particularly veteran stuff, so I have a lot of respect for that. Um, but he said, you know, we have much better things to talk about. This is just people belly aching and wasting their time and yada da and all this. No, it is not. It, here's, here's the problem I have with this. Anytime, the way Pittsfield politics are, Anytime somebody speaks up that they don't like this or they don't like that, it's labeled, you know, being negative, uh, being afraid of change and po progress, being a Karen, you're just belly aching, you're complaining just to complain. Look, that is complaining the way I see it. That post in no way was a wish or hope that the company goes out of business. It was no way a slam or putting anybody down. It was saying, look, when they uh, announced this program, the city's partnership uh, with this franchise for Bird e-scooters, that I didn't believe it was the Pittsfield was a good fit for it. They also, during that press conference, uh, Ricardo Morales, our commissioner of public services, said that... Um, that this was, uh, 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 the, the Bird e-scooters were another example of why uh, that type of mo micro mobility and that we need uh, the bike lanes, that they're, they're crucial uh, for people to commute to work and to go shopping and so forth. Again, I don't see that being the right fit for Pittsfield. Now, does that mean I'm against e-biking or any of that? Would you, would you say that? I'm an avid biker. Uh, I've only done the North Street trip once, uh, and I didn't feel safe. I didn't. Uh, because like most things that we see in Pittsfield, the follow through is just not there. And what I mean by that is the enforcement. So you put these bike lanes in, which is taking up, you know, prime real estate of our one downtown strip. That is some of the most prime real estate in the city. That's your downtown district. And if you're not enforcing no bicycles on the sidewalks, 
if you're not enforcing that bicycles have to adhere to the uh, the traffic laws, they have to use the bike lanes, and there's zero enforcement, well then it's just chaos. Because we all know for the past couple of years that those bike lanes have been there, the majority of bicyclists still ride on the sidewalk. The majority of the people on those bird e-scooters who they're supposed to obey the same rules as any bicyclist are on the sidewalk or are going down the middle of the road or shooting out in front of traffic. We were told that there's no way that it was going to be used for kids or young people for recreation. It would be used uh, for transportation for younger people and working class people to commute, to get to work, to go grocery shopping, to do those type of things. I never saw that. I never thought our geography was the right for, uh, situation for that or whatever. But again, when there's zero enforcement to those rules and regulations, it's just a free for all, which makes those bike lanes a complete waste of our prime real estate. Now, that's not being against the city of Pittsfield. I, like everyone else, and I, I wanna see Pittsfield succeed. I don't think that Ricardo Morales is out to destroy the city. I never once thought that. Uh, I appreciate his enthusiasm, his passion, and his commitment. What I don't like is the reluctancy to communicate with people, to have dialogue, and to listen to people and to compromise. And Mayor Tyre's administration does not compromise. And the reason I'm mentioning Ricardo Morales so much on this is even during that press conference for the Bird e-scooters, when the mayor briefly spoke, she said, let me introduce the man who was responsible for all these changes in Pittsfield the bike lanes, everything to do with our roads, Ricardo Morales. And she clearly said this is his vision. Not hers, his. So that's why I'm mentioning him so much. The mayor put him in that situation. But this isn't hoping that the company fails. This isn't uh, uh, wanting to see disaster for the city of Pittsfield. It's not anti-progress. We wanna see things done right. And when people said, you know, uh, one gentleman said there's a lot of things that we could be talking about, and he mentioned uh, electric charging stations for electric vehicles. Okay, so let's say that then, uh, that that's what, something we were looking at. Wouldn't you believe that other companies looking at doing business with the city of Pittsfield would want to see a track record of successful programs? A happy community right? Wouldn't that be important? So I think we're all on the same page to wanting to see success, but we want to see transparency as a community. We want to have involvement and open dialogue, and it can't be my way or the highway. It can't be that way. You have to listen to the public. You have to take other people's opinions into consideration when this is government for the people, of the people, by the people, you know, it's all of us. And that is where we're missing out. These, this cronyism, these political cliques, this making fun of each other, our director of public services started to make fun of one of our city councilors during the last council meeting when they were discussing trash in the transfer station. And he, then he stopped himself and actually said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. He stopped himself and apologized. But that started turning into our director of public services in public on a televised council meeting going to make fun of a city councilor. All of that attitude and we're putting ourselves that we're enemies of each other is unacceptable. When I posted the um, pictures of the uh, so-called signs in the middle of the street three times, uh, somebody, and I won't say their name, but sent me a message, uh, a person in the city, saying that, how do I know I'm not picking on an undocumented worker with dyslexia? I don't even have a response to that. All I can say to that person is, say that out loud to yourself three times. And if you can take that comment that serious, then I don't, I really don't know what to say. But after I posted that, everyone posted it. It was everywhere. 
I had some people say, you took that picture from me. I still don't know who took the picture. I still have no idea who took that picture because the person who said that to me ended up deleting their comments because it wasn't their picture either. Uh, I credited a couple different people for it and then people said, oh, you put your copyright on it, you thief, you plagiarist. Look, everything, my system is set up where everything that I post automatically throws the It's Pittsfield Tonight mark on it. Automatically. When that started turning into this whole thing, I went in, went back in the settings, pulled that picture and put a different one on there. Um, when I was typing it, posting it, the word uh, spray, spray, I put spray paint when I was referring to the correction job and it said spay uh, and it slipped by me. And oh, people, look at you, that you spelled wrong and this and that. And it was like, listen, that was done that post, like the Berkshire Eagle putting it on there, or Channel 13, or all the news outlets that covered it, there's a lot of irony behind it and a lot of comedy in a, in a way to it. How could that not make you laugh? That someone painted in giant three-foot letters, and not someone, a company. When was the last time you saw a construction crew out there with one person? But that it said SoCal in giant letters across the street for public safety in three different locations. Did I have a typo that I went in and edited and rechanged from spay to spray? Yeah, I did. But to compare a typo on a social media post to a contractor being hired to the city from by the city to paint public safety uh, symbols across the road, I, I can't see how anyone could find a comparison there. But that was not meant to rip somebody apart. It's it, why does there? There's always that percentage that takes it as an, an attack and we have this these clicks in this cronyism but these clicks in the city where it's even divided the general public and I, I, that has to stop it's okay to disagree without being an ah and i don't mean an andrea harrington you have to stop i, I just look uh, it, it is irritating for a lot of people because I, I'm positive we're all on the same page. I'm positive that all of us want to see the city of Pittsfield succeed. I'm positive of that. I'm positive we all want to see a bright future and progress and be cutting edge. All those things. Nobody's afraid of change and progress. Nobody's afraid of rotaries, right? Nobody was afraid of the rotary on Tyler Street. I was pro a rotary there, a roundabout, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I was a little disappointed with that design. I thought the lanes were real, the lane was awfully small, and it was a strange design. I think the one in Great Barrington is beautiful. But hey, I'm not an engineer. If that is the best design, and that mountable curbing, honestly, was the original design from the beginning, not an alteration where they had to go back in and make a correction because trucks weren't getting around it, which is how I remember it. But again, I could be wrong. Uh, I was corrected by some of the people in the city saying, no, that was the original plan all along to put it down. And that was temporary pavement and temporary everything designed to be dug back up. That's what I was told. That sounds crazy to me based off the discussions I saw with the council and everything when they started discussing how they could correct it with mountable curbing. But hey, again, I don't care. At this point, it's there. Let's hope it succeeds and it works for everyone. I was never against a rotary there. I think great things could be coming down the pipe for Tyler Street. And I'd like to see North Street improve greatly also. Greatly. Uh, I do not like that layout. So that's where this post is really about. It's not so much about the bird e-scooter stock, even though that doesn't look good for the company. And if it does bottom out, uh, I don't know what will happen with these rentals and this partnership with the city. Um, that's something to really think about because there's a good chance that will happen. You probably see a slight uptick in the stock tomorrow because there's going to be people like me who might give it a go. But if, uh, and, and people hoping that they can jump over to the NASDAQ and maybe Amazon can pick them up or something. But uh, we'll see where that goes.
if the company is going to go away, it isn't going to happen uh, in the next few days. But it is looking very bleak. When your stock is at 42 cents and you've been warned by the New York Stock Exchange that you're running out of time before we remove you from our stock exchange. I mean, that's the reality. So follow through, everyone. That's where I'm talking about. Follow through, communication, working with each other, not being nasty, but if you disagree, to discuss the issues till we can come to a solution that works for everyone. There's so many things we haven't done that with. Like, does anybody know where we stand with the water restrictions? I mean, the state today, again, in a report I was reading, says we're in a, a stage two drought still, that we're in stage two. Now, if that is the case, why are all the splash pads running when no one was there? I saw them running when it was 50 degrees out and no one around. How much water's being wasted there? Where are the messages from the city informing people? We were informed one time that it was restrictions and you had to do odd days, odd side of the street, even side of the street for watering and that kind of stuff. And then never heard anything again. Never heard anything again. Follow through. We're lacking greatly on it. And that's how I feel. So I'm not against anybody. It's not nitpicking. It's not picking on fake buskers to a business owner that said, what harm does fake buskers do? Well, maybe that business owner has live entertainment at their place of business. Maybe on a night they're having live entertainment. Maybe we should do some busking right outside their door. And let's see if that interrupts their business. Oh, they wouldn't like it then. Not if it's taking away from their business, right? Or the fake buskers that are using the emotions of people to raise money predicated on a lie, money that could be going to our organizations like our food pantries, the organizations collecting funding for winter clothing right now. That's where I was coming from with that. We have to start, there has to be accountability too. But again, transparency, communication, and working together. That's what it's all about. So right now my face hurts like hell from that giant tree branch that took half my head out. Plus I have a sinus infection. So I'm going back to my campsite. Uh, but that is it for now. Everyone have a great day. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll catch you all, I don't know, in the next few days.